So, while this is fresh in the mind, I'll carry on talking about this going within. I was asked the question to me personally as to when did it all begin? And I would say as far back as I can remember, right back to being in the womb with that feeling of the world is closing in. And reflecting more on this, I have, I can't exactly say a memory, but an awareness memory of a time when you're say up to the age of two, where you come into this realm and you're just observing and you haven't developed that lower eye awareness of, of self. And there's a very distinct difference in the feeling of that. And the way I've expressed it is always having this consistent feeling that something is off. Now reflecting on this a bit further, when we're in a realm that is described as duality, this physical realm, and things are presented as contrasts. So that feeling of things not being quite right, but unable to pinpoint and point to anything specific and say, it's that that's causing it, or it's this that's causing it. It's just that sort of intuition feeling that something isn't quite right. And that is the contrast. That is what is being presented. It's purely so you can see the difference. Perhaps the best analogy that I could use, or the briefest summary that I could use to describe this, is the character of Siegfried. Interestingly, there is a thing called the Siegfried line connected with World War I, but this is nothing to do with that historic whatever. This is to do with the internal Siegfried line. Now, Siegfried, Sieg means war. Fried means, as is suggested in English, free, freedom from war. So you start with war and then you move to freedom. And that's exactly what this character in Wagner's Ring Cycle does. He He's basically like the as we come into this world with no fear, like as a, a, a very young child, you're just in, naturally inquisitive. You don't know that if something's going to burn you, you don't know if you're going into danger. You, you'd have no road sense, for example. You'd just see something across the road and, and start to cross with no care or worry or fear about being hit by a car or whatever the scenario. So this is this character Siegfried, the young Siegfried, which was the original title of the third part of Wagner's four evening drama called Siegfried. This character has to learn fear. And in learning fear, you have this other character, which is this divine feminine called Brunhilde. She is like a fallen Valkyrie, because she ha has her eyes open to what human love is, and what love is in general, in a, in a human context, but obviously beyond that. And she exercises her free will and disobeys Wotan and protects Siegfried, the father of Siegfried. And is punished for it by put, by taking away her immortal status, and she's put into this magic sleep and surrounded by magic fire. 
But there's still love there from o uh, Votan or Odin who protects her with this fire. So only the, the worthy, only the one that is worthy can penetrate that fire. And that in this is Siegfried. He goes through the fire because he has no fear and he rescues Brunhilde, which is basically just an expression an artistic expression of your divine feminine and your divine masculine. It is an internal journey of, when we come into this reality, we have no fear. We learn fear with the experience of life. From every external angle, whether it be touching a, a radiator and burning yourself or a or hot boiling water and knowing not to do it again. But, I mean, the severity of could leave scarring as a lasting reminder, for example. Or it could just be a memory experience. But they're all things to teach us. And the fear part is a, an integral part of this. You couldn't have the human experience without experiencing fear, to experience the contrast, to distinguish good from bad, to learn the knowledge of good and evil. You have to experience these things. Same, same as at the end of this physical experience, it would not be a life unless there was a death. It brings it into balance. But it is not the end. But this material realm that is pulling you down into that lower conscious will try and convince you that you are the body. So obviously when the body expires, that's the end of you and it sets up this sort of lower conscious feeling of panic. But has anybody ever lived through death? You can't experience it without going through it. <laughs> bit of a sort of conundrum really from a mortal perspective but when you develop that awareness that you are not the physical body it is just basically like a vehicle to interact with this realm and then to gain from the experience one moment ah we're running again good anyway so <coughs> Siegfried has to be fearless so we start off as fearless, having no fear, but with no experience. Likewise, in this spiritual path, if you're still leaving a doorway open and you're holding doubt and fear with inside yourself, you're leaving yourself open. You will not be able to cross that metaphorical fire and rescue yourself. Because that is just anthropomorphized into a, a music drama, which is showing you exactly the same story. It's showing you your spiritual journey. So, part of where did this all begin? You get what would I would call the Wall of Jericho moment, that, were, that moment when it feels like the entire world has crashed around you. Um, it's all come crumbling down, the world being the, the Jericho, as it were, the Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, go Murrow, Gomorrah. It's, you're, you're, you're saying goodbye to the future. That's what it's expressing. The Sodom, it's like... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? You're, you're harming yourself, basically because you're placing limitations by that doubt and that fear in your abilities. You're stopping yourself from doing things. So these are, these are states to overcome. That's what's expressed in the Old Testament as well. And uh, so you've got to go through all these experiences. That's the only way you're ever going to learn anything is to go through experiences. Hmm. But because of this external realm is infinite possibilities 
and you are individualised, your paths are all very individual. There is no sort of off-the-peg, one-size-fits-all answer to anything. That's why you, you, you can't have an external guru, because their experiences are different. You can't, you can't have someone come and say to you, tell me what to do, because have I got to go through this experience, but also take control of your experience and have to learn every little facet about you. And how could I ever learn how anything feels to you? Only you know what how anything feels to you. You can't export that feeling. They are personal. That's part of this experience. But there are patterns and there are parallels. There are general similarities. That's expressed in the physicality. When you think of human, how if you take just the most visually obvious differences, you can see there are differences, but generally to the same pattern. Four limbs, a head and a, and a body. <laughs> That's basically it, and walking on two legs. That's sort of the... You can't get more general than that, but then you start going into the details of eye colour, hair colour, skin colour, and all this sort of thing, height, um, build, it then becomes more complex. But generally, there is a similarity, so we do have parallels with this walking this path, this spiritual journey. So it's going through these experiences, you get that wall of Jericho moment, and it's sort of that no one knows the time, even in that, it's, it could be as a panic attack, it could be as anxiety, these are things I've experienced, and of course at the time you don't know what it is, you don't know what this sudden weird sensation is that you're experiencing, you don't know how to even deal with it, and of course you've only got past experiences on which to draw, and this is something new, this doesn't make sense, this is a jolt into the unknown. It's a first sort of real step on this spiritual path. But then begins the rabbit holes. They're not just conspiracy theories. On a broader canvas that I'm painting here, metaphorically speaking. Now, depression and anxiety, they're unpleasant feelings. So it's, you're given all these temptations, it could be all, this, <laughs> it could be all forms of addiction. In the worst case scenarios are the ones that are the blotting out, and the, the sort of false escapism trap of, say, heroin or Valium or cocaine or those sort of crack cocaine. The things that will take you up on a high, which is great the first time, but as quick as you go up, you come crashing down. And that's an even more unpleasant feeling. So now you've got to do a repeat. But the problem is, to get back to that first high, you've got to increase the dosage. And of course, with some of the more illegal drugs, they're costly. So now you've got to fund what becomes an addiction. And of course, that becomes an awful rabbit hole. I suppose in a way you could say you do find the end of that one if you overdose. But I wouldn't recommend that because you'll find yourself back here and having to do it all over again. I don't care whether you believe me or not, but the sheer number of testimonies of people who talk about past lives are they all making it up? Just view, view some of the things, view some of the testimonies, and or it, you may even have your own experiences. Only you will know this, and only you, you, only you will know what feels right to you, what you are willing to accept as being true. You don't have to believe anybody's testimony. The only one that you're trying to prove anything to is yourself. Whether anybody else believes it is entirely up to them. That's free will. But then when you consider, if you 
moving sort of way past that, if you can come out of the anxiety and the depression and things, I mean, you may go down the truth-seeking route and then open up a whole load more rabbit holes, which will only ever going to come back and tell you what is presented to you is telling you that what you've been told is a lie. It's not going to tell you anything more than that. And the more you'll go into these rabbit holes, they are like mud floods. The more you go into a mud flood, you will sink deeper and deeper as if it was real mud. It will, you will be immersed and drowned in it. And you won't find the answer. But if you want to wade around in that, that's, or any of these things, that's fine. But ask yourself this, from what you're getting out of it, is it benefiting you or is it giving you a sort of quite negative feeling about this reality? And do you really want to put yourself through that? Do you want to be wading in that swamp? It's pretty cold, dark, ice cold, and ice obviously can burn as well. So I'm not talking about physical, I'm talking about metaphysical and how it feels inside you. So it's pretty, it can be a pretty dire place to be. <coughs> and it's a process of looking at various external things. But of course, eventually, it will come down, or it will come full circle. Like everything is magnetic in this reality. So you're, you've got a toroidal aura field around you, an informed field. So everything you put out comes back. So eventually you, it will come back full circle and you'll come back within yourself because you cannot find the answers that you're looking for out there. So there is only one other place. It's duality, so it's either in or it's out. So are you in or are you out? How, how far are you prepared to go within? Think of it in what the system presents to you in terms of war. These brave men and women gave their lives for king and country or whatever. Or something they strongly believe in their belief system. They're prepared to go to the ultimate in not budging, being rigid and sacrificing themselves but what are you sacrificing yourself to and i mean that with no disrespect to any fallen during war because those people did what they believed or what they were told and they did what they believed was right but look at what the system presents now are you prepared to surrender your garment your physical body i'm not talking about um killing yourself but I am talking about killing yourself to yourself. Admitting that your lower consciousness mind has done its very best to try and steer you somewhere and it's never been actually very good. And it's uh, a series of disasters. But we learn greatest by our mistakes. We're presented contrasts and things for this very reason. Because it follows the same pattern. You come in without fear. You have to learn fear through experiences. But then you have to overcome that negative feeling by having self-belief. You had a materialist physical world presentation of mandatory testing now what if you internalize what that testing really means it becomes a test upon yourself how far this is the thing to ask yourself how far can you go how far can you deny that external reality to the point where it changes for you? What is the world you would like to see presented to you? 
Think about that. Now, hopefully you've got some sort of idea of what you would like presented to you. So the question now comes about is how that can be achieved. Well, you are basically magnetic. Inside you is all potential. The dielectric, the core, the hourglass shape. It's your spirit in, that's inside you, your true essence, your true you. From that, you can generate and radiate out. So you start projecting out onto this reality. And you do start to create the world around you. As I've left a message with Julia, Simplicity Reveal Channel, and said, use any of this as well. The more this is said, the better, because repeats, if they're the right repeats, become something good. They're not all bad, because we're in the realm of duality. So there is always a mirror presentation, and there is a opposite to that, a true presentation. It's the one that you create. So say, for example, you're now starting to get concerned by the external world, food shortages, rising prices, practical everyday concerns of the external reality. So how are you going to change that? Well, one way would be to gear yourself up to off-grid community living, intentional communities, where you are living more in harmony with nature. And then when I say harm, harmony, some people will readily pick up and say, I don't want to harm on my or harm many. But what if it's harm money or the, the thing that controls money? Because if you're moving more to that sort of off-grid lifestyle and you're not putting and feeding the system the finances you're not you're ceasing to f sort of feed a monster because you're taking control of your reality but for that to work requires you to do something first and that is to do what is called shadow work the internal work we're all very prone to not listening to each other and as you're hearing things said you want to get out your response to what's being said and not letting the other person finish I've been guilty of that and I still do it and I'm becoming more aware of it and I've noticed I find it annoying <laughs> when I've listened to playbacks when I've done the podcast with Julia and I'm she's talking and I'm going yeah yeah, oh yeah, and I'm just saying the odd little word, but of course it's clipping and making like bubble popping sounds when she's talking. So that's something I've got to address and I don't mind admitting it on video because it's true. I can see it for myself. So that's something I need to work on and you'll be able to see if I've achieved it. But... You'd probably say, I, you'd make an objection, I can't just up and move to an off-grid community. Fair enough. But, well, that actually gives you the opportunity to do the shadow work. Because if you're being triggered by something another person says, and you're wanting to live in a community where the whole idea is you all get on and you all sing from the same song sheet, how well do you think that's going to work? I'm sure you've all experienced how if you're in a workplace and you've got a nucleus of people and they all get on, but one then leaves and somebody new comes in and that influx of a new person into that circle can change the entire dynamics of what might have been a happy group. So put that in the context of an intentional community. Unless your intentions are on a very similar vibration, 
that ain't going to work. So, the language lessons of the heart, Michael Harrell. You can find the playlist on Julia's Simplicity Revealed channel. That is the foundation stone, the core inner work that we all need to do to face ourselves. And it's like the anxiety and the depression. When you first do it, it feels horrible. It is that ice cold Atlantic, but do you want to go down with the Titanic? Or do you want to take that chance, take that leap into the unknown? Because you have a, a good, ch a, a far better chance of making it to, to surviving. And you can read the word surviving in the material sense as a, as a physical being, or you can read it in the spiritual sense. Do you want to have a full experience in this reality and overcome that fear and find out who you truly are? That is the whole object of this game. For you to find out who you truly are. That's all it is. Everything else external of you is just a presentation. It's just like in a Hollywood film. You will have stunts, you will have added realism to make the thing seem more believable. <laughs> it's that simple. But it rests within you to find it within you. Nobody else can do it for you. All we can do is share our experiences and in that hopefully guide each other from our experiences to make it easier for the next person to go through whatever step they on because we're all on different stages. There's no sort of upper or lower, higher or lower echelons. We're all on, we're all got individual paths. So we may have strengths and weaknesses in particular areas. Like I mentioned on the last video, my inherent laziness without going out there and doing yoga. And yet I know yoga would do me really good. But of course, I've also got the three minute uh, meditation and exercise, which I'm, I'm going to be doing again today. So one step at a time, just like walking the same pattern. So hopefully that's added a bit more to the going within and um, brought a bit of clarity to what that means and given you some new options to consider. And just because you're saying at this precise moment, I can't, it's also telling you that at this precise moment you can, because you might not be able to move to an intentional community but you may more likely be in a position where you can at least do a three minute meditation and energize yourself. Take a step to do something at least that is going to help you, that is going to benefit you, that is going to serve you. It's not about anybody coming and bringing you stuff and making you offerings and things. It's not some egoic... I'm the king of the world trip. It's it's far more than that. It and it's far more personal to you as an individual. But if you do the, these things, they will benefit and they will serve you. And you will start to discover yourself, the real you inside. Right, we're up to almost half an hour again. So I am going to say, love you all. Again, put the. Uh, Anything you want to say, put in the comments. I'd love to hear your response. And I, and even better, if it's given a bit of clarity so it's helped unlock something for you, all the better. So I'm just letting this all out because I feel this is something I'm meant to share. So that's what I'm doing. Just going with the gut feeling, you could say. Love to you all and ta-ta for now.